Hi, welcome to the Net Force Lab. In this lab, you're going to answer the question, how do opposing forces influence an object's motion? And we're going to talk about the sum of forces on an object. Now, when you add forces to an object, it's not like regular addition. It's a little more complicated than that. And that's what we're going to look at in this lab today. For this lab, you're going to need the following materials. Clay, four ring hooks, the 5 Newton 500 gram spring scale, a medium rubber band, a pine block, string, and scissors. In this experiment, you're going to place a pine block on a table, attach weights to it on different sides, and then see what happens when those weights pull the block to one side or the other when you let go of the block. Now to do this lab, you're going to need an elevated smooth surface with four sides, like a kitchen table, a desk or a tray table that doesn't have raised edges. The table doesn't have to be square, but you must be able to hang the weights from the table on the strings. And the weights have to be able to hang from three different directions off of the table. Now in step one, you're going to use clay and ring hooks to create two 100 gram masses and two 250 gram masses. Start with four roughly cube shaped pieces of clay too small and too large, and press a hook into each clay mass as shown in the photo. Hang the clay masses from the spring scale, add or remove clay until you get the correct mass in grams for each one. Number two, stretch a medium rubber band around the perimeter of the pine block, that is, all around the narrower sides of the block. You might need to wrap the rubber band around the perimeter twice so it's tight enough. Then place the block in the center of the table. Part 3. Measure out four pieces of string. Each length of string should be long enough for each mass to dangle from the edge of the table while the block of wood remains in the center of the table. Then, attach the piece of string to each mass. Now you're going to do four experiments here. In experiment 1, place the pine block in front of you in the center of the table and tie one 250 gram mass to the left side of the block. Holding the block with one hand, place the 250 gram mass over the edge of the table. Think about which way the block will move and then let go of the block. The block should move for each experiment. If it doesn't move, your table is either too rough or the block is too heavy. To compensate for that, either find a lighter block or do the experiment using heavier masses. Report your findings with a diagram. Sketch the table with the block and string as viewed from above. Your diagram should be a simple outline of the table with a square in the center that represents the block. On the diagram, note the mass in grams on the string and draw an arrow to show how the block moved. Now we're going to do experiment two. Return the pine block to the center of the table and tie 100 gram mass to the side of the block facing you. Holding the block with one hand, place each mass over an edge of the table, just like you see in this photo. Think about which way the block will move, and then let go of the block. Again, make a diagram that shows the setup and the direction that the block moved. And now for experiment three. Again, return the pine block to the center of the table, and replace the 100 gram mass with the other 250 gram mass. Hold the block with one hand and place each mass over an edge of the table. Think about which way the block will move and let go of the block. Once again, draw a diagram that shows what happened to the block. Now we're going to do experiment four. Again, put the pine block in the center of the table and use all four masses in such a way that the pine block stays right in the center of the table. You might have to experiment a little bit but keep working at it until that pine block is balanced in place by the four forces. Now for every lab we have a hypothesis. The hypothesis here is can you predict an object's motion if you know the forces that act on the object and the direction of those forces? And now the analysis. Compare your diagrams with the hypothesis. Does it look like you can predict an object's direction of motion if you know the forces that are acting on the object.